Mobile apps. We love them. We rely on them. And when they don't work exactly the way we want every time, we delete them. Testing iOS apps has always been about making compromises. Take manual testing. It's slow, it's error prone, and ultimately, it delays releases. Not to mention it's about as tedious as mowing a football field with nail clippers. And iOS simulators, well, sure they're fast, but accurate, not so much. That leaves us with just one good option for automated regression testing, a physical device farm built with real iPhones. Meet John Pearl, QA Wolf co-founder and CEO. Mobile was the number one platform that kept coming up from our customers, from our prospects, in terms of where they wanted help preventing bugs. Simulators aren't an accurate representation of what the app is gonna be like when your users are using it. We didn't necessarily wanna build on infrastructure. We just found it was a necessity to actually be able to deliver this coverage at scale with the high quality experience that we have for web, running them fast and then parallel and affordable to our customers. How do we go about starting this building process and where do we start building it at? OKC, a place with big skies, bigger brisket, and apparently QA Wolf's garage-based iOS device farm. This is Jaden Lamont, staff product engineering lead. So this is our device farm prototype that we're working on. We've started embarking on this journey to build a physical device farm where you have rows of devices that exist in a server rack and we have the ability to control them remotely and connect them to our platform so we can run our customers' tests. Initially, we were just trying to get one drawer of devices up and running. One of the things that we're continuing to figure out is just like, how many devices can we plug into a single machine? Because of the nature of what we're doing with these devices, it's very intensive streaming. Our upload bandwidth is very crucial. So we've got three drawers of phones. We're trying to understand what our compute requirements are gonna be on a per device basis. So far, the whole system's working very well. Everything was on track to scale up until... The whole thing just crashed. Basically, like each mini PC has a portion of its CPU allocated to each device that runs some internal software. Those interactions were showing to be a bit sluggish with not enough CPU allocated per device. QA Wolf runs on speed. Lag, it's a deal breaker. A major pivot was in order. Weeks of late nights, CPU debates, and a few minor existential crises later, the new configuration was born. We opted to go with a one use server, which will actually allow us to control at least 60 devices now. We feel pretty comfortable now with where we are and the configuration that things are. So bunking at Jaden's, it was no longer an option. Enter the iPhone hotel. What makes for a good iPhone hotel? Well, let's ask Margie the general manager of QA Wolf's selected data center. As far as security goes, we definitely take as big as measures as we can. We have a perimeter fence that goes around the entire campus. There's two-factor authentication to get into the data center. Plus we have the access list. And if you're not on the access list and showing your state issued ID with a picture on it, then we won't let you in, even if you're the CEO of the company. As far as cybersecurity, we have a group of network engineers that work and manage our network. We go through a SOC 2 Type 2 audit every year. We have two redundant carriers. If one carrier goes down, the other carrier will pick up the load. As far as uptime, we're what I would call a tier three facility. So if we for some reason do lose AC power, we have an automatic transfer switch that automatically tells our generators to fire. Okay, so the garage days are over, the data center is finally live, and that infrastructure is humming. But what can this thing actually do? Because we own our own infrastructure, we aren't held back by the limitations of a third party's infrastructure. Our first mobile customer needed 
us to test their iBeacon support in their app. An app that you use in the real world, when you walk up to certain things, different things happen in the app. That's not possible to test on other infer providers today, but really our goal is to deliver any coverage that is required. If we run into something that we can't support, then we have that full control. We have our own mobile infra team. We've run into other like iOS use cases. We're starting to add an iPad support to our device farm. I'm starting to see that too for iOS and Android, that same amazing value prop of giving your team the signal and this like safety net ahead of releases. Now we can prevent those same bugs on these devices that we use all day, every day. Seriously, don't build the farm. You might end up in a garage full of USB cables, a bunch of fans you're not sure what to do with, and boxes and boxes of iPhones. Perhaps even more than a couple of different regrets. QA Wolf built a mobile iOS device farm so that you don't have to.